Nate and I would like to thank the Niagara Corporation for sponsoring today's episode of Let Me Tell You Something. Niagara is the country's leading manufacturer of water-conserving plumbing products, including toilets that reduce water usage by up to 60%. Niagara products were originally designed just for plumbing professionals, but they're now available for homeowners as well. So, if you're remodeling your home or constructing new, check out NiagaraCorp.com to get long-lasting water savings. What's up, y'all? It's your boy Isaiah Stanback back in the building again for another episode of Let Me Tell You Something, man. I'm I'm Nate Newton. I'm Nate. Big New. That's big. That's big Nate right there, y'all. Y'all know who it is. What's up, Nate, man? I ain't seen you in a minute, man. We we took a week off, man. How you doing? I'm doing good, Isaiah. Man, it's always good to see you, man. Then when you come back with the shirt off. I mean, you 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 know what's impressing me about you, Isaiah, is you getting into the me world now. I see how you try to re-sculpture the body, <laughs> try to make it about Isaiah, getting on TV, getting on the stream, and oh my God, you look good, Zeus. <laughs> Nate dog, it's a big year, Nate dog. You know what I'm saying? Right. And we, and you and I, we both have to get ready for camp. Yeah, you know so. I'm I'm getting in camp mode, Nate. Okay. You know, I know we're not hitting the field no more, but last time we talked about getting yourself ready right, and right. doing things to change yourself. I'm just trying to get game ready, baby. Yeah, you know? Well, you're getting close too, man. You're starting to get some definitions in that upper arm up in there. You know what I'm saying? Hey man, I gotta I gotta stay consistent, man. I gotta stay consistent. <laughs> What's uh what you been up to, man, the last the last few Nothing, weeks? Nothing, man. Just remin been reminiscing about camp and how I wanna attack it this year. Uh I know that you're gonna be doing more things. With the Cowboys this year, so I I probably get out there probably around about the thirtieth that morning, the day before they hit, because normally I try to get out there when they get out there, but I I don't want to watch them walk through. I mean I've walk watched through. them walk yeah. through. We've done that with the OTAs and all the all season conditioning. I mean they be right. out there supposed to be conditioning and look like they just be walking through. So I'm like it, I'm <laughs> I want to get there when they're gonna do something just a little bit more physical. You need, you need a little bit more juice. Yeah, when you going to get there? Because I get there on the 30th on that morning. I get there the same day as you. Yeah. I get there the same day as you. Yep. Well, I, I thought by, yep. and I'm not trying, I'm trying to spill the beans and hoping you'll spill the beans because you're going to be doing more with the Cowboys. So I'm like, I thought you would go out there the day that they arrive because you have to really get uh, get a, uh, a inside knowledge. You have to get more personal yeah. because you're going to be talking about these kids where? During the preseason? Yeah, Nate. So I'm going to be in the booth calling the games for all three preseason games. Um, definitely excited about that. Have the opportunity to go up there. A couple years ago, I had one game they gave me. Then they gave me two games last year. And now all of a sudden, they give me three games. And in the third game, I'm being there with your boy, the one and only Mr. Playmaker himself. So that should be an interesting game to call that, for that, sure. That's free money there. He ain't going to stop talking. <laughs> you know, you know, and, he, and the reason you – and, and, and Isaiah – he going to always grab your arm because when he grab your arm, that means he wants you to shut up because he want to do all the talking. <laughs> so he ain't going to never let loose your arm. When you when you leave out of that studio, you're going to have to put some type of bandage on your arm because you're going to be like bruised from him just squeezing you where he can do he all gonna, the talking. He's going to be hemming me up, huh? You know, so. That's hilarious. Yeah. That's hilarious. Well, man, Nate Dog, man, I, I got to get this off my chest, man. Right. I, I'm, I need to know. I need to know from you because you've played with some great players. You've played with some great players and i need to know what separates confidence and cockiness i just i i gotta know nate you play you play with some amazing dudes and we just mentioned one of them but like help me understand it because i'm, I'm gonna bring it back and i'm gonna help you understand why i'm asking you that question because there's one player on the team right now with the dallas cowboys at least specifically that i'm a little concerned with because i feel like they're crossing over to the cockiness side but i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna let you go ahead and give us a definition of of of, of what the difference is between the guys that you play with the guys that i play were 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 super confident uh they they wasn't cocky because i believe confidence is electric fine success Mm. That, that's you know that's these guys have had success on a different level than what I had or maybe what you had and you saw it and they spoke on it and it always came true the Super Bowls the Pro Bowls the Hall of Fames these guys were always confident in who they were how they did it 
and 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 when they spoke it, you believe and you saw them doing it. Cocky people are people that almost get there, uh, like they're living insecure. I mean, they 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 being cocky because they hoping they can get there. They don't know they can get there because they don't see yeah. themselves doing it. So they they just they just run their mouth. Uh, it's different between having fifteen sacks. Yeah, yeah, I'm fifteen sacks, and your team is is one in fifteen. Then have fifteen right. sacks, and your team is twelve and twelve and two, or twelve and three. Right. And, you know, I see what you're saying. And so cocky, and it's kind of hard to explain because I believe confident people have a plan, executes the plan, and then they can talk about it with confidence. Cocky people, they hoping and they wishing. And they looking over, you know, trying to look across the fence because they've seen that success and they want it. They may have the athletic ability and they may have the uh, right. mental capabilities to get it done, but they haven't yet. So that's cockiness, bro. I hope I answered well, it the best I could. All right, Big Nate. So if I, if I hear you correctly, what you're trying to say is the distinguishing factor between confidence and cockiness, at least in the when, we, when we're talking about Deion Sanders and Michael Irvin, how were those two different in that regard? Was either one of them cocky or were they both just confident? They were confident. They, when you've had, when you've been in high school, and I start there, because I don't, I don't get off on junior high and pop Warner. I don't, them stats will never do nothing. <laughs> Come on, man! Everybody got pop Warner. Yeah, uh, but yeah, but them, you know, I scored a hundred touchdowns in pop Warner. So yeah, okay, uh, you know. But anyway. In high school, when you are a top 100 player yeah. uh, uh, in the country, of thousands and thousands and thousands of kids, uh-huh. from, from 0A to 6A, and you are right. a top 100 kid, that's what Michael Irvin was. That's what uh, Deion Sanders was. They were top 100 kids. And in probably Deion's case, he was probably one of the top 10 athletes in the country. Correct. So these guys have had success on every level. You know, they college, they they were the top 100, top 10%, top 20% in what they did and how they did it. So when they talked, it was from a standpoint, and I'm talking about guys that won national championships. Correct. I was always in the talk for national championships, player of the year, you know, All-American, first team, and all in whatever cereal box you want to put them on, they were there. <laughs> so these guys are talking from success of actually doing it. Uh, it's it's a big difference, you know. So you talk about so the, so you're saying the team, the team goals versus the individual goals may be different, but it's it, but the true team guys know how to put it all together. Okay, you know. All right, so. All right, so the, so that if that's the case, right? Being that you play with all these greats and right. you're saying that they were all just confident players, at what point does somebody then step over into the cockiness bucket? Like, what what characteristic would you say declares somebody now as being deemed cocky versus confident? I'll give you an example. So you talk, like I've seen okay. Dion be cocky. I've seen him be cocky when people try to say, "Well, Dion, what what what?" Defensive back reminds you of you. And, and they keep coming at him. You know, he just said, hey, I was great. I was good. He, he admits that. And he's trying to be confident. But then you say, hey, Dion. And I'm going to say, hey, Zeus, what makes you great? What makes you so great in the NFL? What, what, what wide receiver looks like you? And then you say, well, this wide receiver mm-hmm. had this. This wide receiver. And that's what Dion did one time. And people say he cocky because he used five different DBs who had great skill sets to, to, to describe him. him. Now that's cockiness. <laughs> that is that is cockiness. You know, you couldn't accept the fact that he like, yeah, man, I was great. I did my thing. I was confident. I used to shut down one side of the field. That wasn't good enough. That was just trying yep. to be confident, trying to be yep. humbly confident, if you can use those two words together. But then when you keep jabbing at him, like, well, man, well, what, what, receive, what cornerback? Re- no cornerback is me. So he named like six different cornerbacks yeah. that had all the skill sets that may have added up to him. <laughs> I was like, wow, Dion, that's kind of cocky there. You see what I'm saying? All right. So, 
All right, there's two other gentlemen. Okay, we talk about football players. There's two gentlemen in the sport of basketball that I would imagine would be at the top of this conversation. And I saw a quote online at some point this week, and it was it was an All Star game, NBA All Star game. And it was Michael Jordan, and he was talking right. to Kobe Bryant, and Kobe Bryant was wearing some Air right. Jordan tennis shoes. And Michael Jordan told him, he said, you can wear my shoes, but you'll never right, feel right. my shoes. Right. And then Kobe Bryant went out there and busted him for 42 <laughs> points. <laughs> All right. game. You know, that, that that's that joyful <laughs> cockiness, man. That Those are two guys that love one yeah. another, that knew each other personally off the field. Kobe really, really looked up to Mike and tried to really, he couldn't feel right. those shoes, but he tried yeah, to feel those shoes. And, uh, that, that, that's a different type of cockiness. Uh, the cockiness right. and brashness that some players have. Uh, uh, it's some young players that I I, I don't want to. I, I'm not that type of guy to call. It's some young guys in the NBA that are very cocky, and that have not proven themselves. Yeah. You know, but they always put themselves right. in that position. Like, look at me. You know, uh, Dion always was trying to sell himself. But he did it in a way. He did it with success, and uh, and right. I and I. You know what? The bottom line is: is it a, is it a difference and, and, in cockiness and confidence? It's just. Uh, I think it's just the way you, the perception of the words. It's a, it's yeah. a fine line, right? It, it, I don't know if it's in yes. the eye of the beholder. If it's you know how you communicate, is it how you you carry yourself? That's why it's such an intriguing question to me because I feel like. As professional athletes, there has to be some level of, I don't want to say, I guess there is a little bit of arrogance. That's the word. That's the word that, 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 yeah. If you don't have a certain amount of arrogance about you as a, as a player, you know, uh, like, like people always be, no, you're always joking. You're always playing around. You're always doing this right here. You, you, you know, you're not like other guys. And I tell them until you line up on the field. You know, you don't take your ability and I don't take my ability and we don't spill it on people all the time because we're willing to listen to people. Mm -hmm. Well, Dion is a dictator. Right. Michael Irvin is a dictator. They ain't going to let, they ain't going to let mm -hmm. you tell, tell, you know, you're not going to tell Michael Irvin how good you is because he ain't going to never stop talking to tell you how good he was. Yeah, you, you get what I'm saying? <laughs> and so it, it's got to be a certain, like, I, you know, I was talking to some of my friends last night. I was, I was driving from in from uh, Big E's golf tournament up in Delaware. And, then, and it was, you know, two, three in the morning. I had two or three of my friends linked on the phone. I'm telling them, and they listening to me talk. And they, they never heard me talk the way I was talking. And they were like, wow, man, you, I, we never knew that. We never, Because my spirit won't let me do that. You know, it's just what it's just who you are. Yeah, that's your, that's so, your faith. And I'm like, and I'm, right. and I'm telling them. And another reason I, I say I normally don't tell these stories is because people try to make them. You know, they try to make them more than what they are. But and that's what what they are. But see, Dion is quiet. I'm telling you, he is quiet. The only thing that turns Dion on is them cameras, because he he understands marketing. You know, and and that is the deal today. If you don't have cockiness about you, if you don't have that arrogance about you, because uh, this is what I've learned in talking to Dion, and we're talking about cockiness and confidence. Dion said, "With this, he told me this with my cockiness, or with my arrogance, or with my confidence, whatever you, whatever word you want to use for me, that what that's it's what draws you to me, to either be like me or hate me." But you're gonna have the cameras on me because I have shown you through my actions at a high level that what I say is for real. And so and I, I looked at him, he like, yeah, he said, just think now. And I give you another example. Mr. Jones is not humble. He is not humble. He is one of the most confident, arrogant, cocky guys in the world. Y'all don't know him personally. Y'all haven't seen him when he lets his hair down. I have. You get what I'm saying? And, and so I get what it, you're saying. it's what you want to perceive. You know what I'm saying? 
I'm, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up. The reason why I, I wanted to bring this topic up today, Nate, is because there's a, there's a video going around online about a young Michael Parsons. Okay, Michael Parsons, obviously, uh, now I guess you can classify him as a defensive right. end for the Dallas Cowboys. He's no longer considered a linebacker because he's dedicated himself to being a rush in. But I'm gonna see. I'm gonna play this, Nate. I'm gonna see if it comes okay. across on this microphone. Okay. Let me know if you can hear this. This is what he said in a statement uh, during an interview when referring to people coming after him and after their defense this year. Yeah, that's cool. Come. You want him to come. You know, like you said, you, you go to a safari, you see buses, they all pull up on lines. They don't flinch. Why? Because they're king. You know? They're not going to flinch. Please come. Come visit. You're more than welcome. I'm okay with feeling uncomfortable. Did you hear that, Nate? Yeah, I can hear it, man. So, well, so he I, said... I'm asking, to me, he said he ain't going to flinch. He like a lion. He the king. He ain't going to flinch. Now, to me, in the era that I played in, he'd have fell right in with us on that. We ain't okay. flinching, homeboy. We ain't yeah. flinching. But now, I don't been, te- been on teams. When I first got to the Cowboys, I was like, come on, dog. You're being... Co-. I'm serious. I can see it from both angles. <laughs> but, but, but if you talking about going past the second round of the playoffs... And you talking like this, you're right. Don't flinch. But if you get knocked out in the first round, you're just being cocky. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, bro, I'm a winner. I'm a winner. So, hold on, Nate. So, yeah. Hold on, Nate. So what, you, what you're saying is the divisive line between cockiness and confidence is what the end result so of the, the team the, ends up being. It has nothing to do with your personal about your personal accolades. It's all about the team. So Michael Parsons can go out there and get one sack a game, finish a year with 17 sacks, and if they get knocked out in the first round, he's being cocky. What's the difference between Dan Marino and uh, John Elway? And Joe? <laughs> What's the difference between Char Barkley and Shaq? Char Barkley, Char, Char be killing Shaq. And then Shaq, the, yo, I'll tell you what. When I won my second championship, oh, you know about that, Charles? Charles, you get quiet. Like, yeah. What's mm. the difference, bro? What's mm. the difference? Me and you got rings, Isaiah. Mm-hmm. So everybody can yeah. come up. You no, know, people will be, oh, man, look at such and such, such and such, such and such. You know, and I've been out, and guys, I couldn't get nobody. To, nobody would come to my table and sign. Yeah. Nobody to, and they'd be like, I said, well, y'all get through? You know, I've said this, you know, Young, dumb, being arrogant. I was out with a great player. I'm not going to call it a player. I said, well, y'all get through with him. Y'all want to see a Super Bowl ring come over here. And you know my table got full? I said, because you can't see the ring unless I sign. And so, because at the end of the day, it's not what you did individually. This ain't, this ain't boxing. This ain't Muhammad Ali. This ain't Floyd Mayweather. <laughs> you know, this ain't, you know what I'm saying? That's a different, that's a different sport. That's where you have to be cocky. That's where you have to be over yeah. the top. You're yeah, talking about a team sure. sport, bro. You're talking about a team sport. What Patrick Mahomes knew that, that Dan Marino didn't understand was I got arm talent. Dan Marino had some of the greatest arm talent in the world. But when we go to talking about quarterbacks, why are we talking about Joe Montana, who didn't hardly have no arm strength? Why, why, why do we talk about guys like that? You know, think about that. Dan Marino will tell you if we if, if Dan ain't throwing, we ain't going. And I love Dan Marino. Pittsburgh coming out, oh, coming out and just chunking that thing. Made midget yeah, receivers yeah. great. Made made midget receivers eight feet tall with his accuracy. But who who, right. who, who you gonna take? John Elway, uh, a Dan. I'm taking John. I need the Super Bowl rings. Because that is my end result, bro. It, it, if Parsons can deliver yeah. an NFC championship, oh, he's a, he he's the Lion King. But if they get knocked out in the second round, if they get <laughs> knocked out in the second Mufasa? round, he, on, he the sequel, dog. Now, all he's going to be is the sequel. And it never does oh, better than the, no. than the original. Yeah. No. Uh-huh. I like that, Nate. Thanks for breaking that down, man. I know you. I know you're 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 a great yourself, yeah. and you play with some other greats. Uh, just in your era, you're blessed to do so, man. So I figured if anybody would have an understanding of how to distinguish between those two, yes. those two titles of confidence and, and cockiness, I, I figured it would be you. Uh, that's that's good stuff. Before we before we get out of here, Nate, there's there's a rumor going around that that the Cowboys want to 
make some signings prior to camp. And the word on the street is, as of today, it's filming, that they're talking to, to C.D. Lamb about giving him 25 to $30 million take it, a year. CD. If they If they give it to you, take it. Take it. Make make sure it's ninety uh, percent of it guaranteed and take it. What I, what I keep trying to tell guys, I'll take a little bit less money, but you got to guarantee it all. That way, guarantee it. Correct. Three years from now, they ain't trying to figure out how to give your money to Tobert. You get what I'm saying? Because you take yeah. hey, you you got to guarantee I, I it all. Pick up what you're putting down. That's what hey, Chris Paul did. Wrapped it out to well, the end. I'll... They kicked Chris Paul to the end in the NBA, Facts. but he still got fifteen mil guaranteed. Got his bread. Yeah. Got his bread. You can't, you can, you can move me around wherever you want Thank to. You. I'm still going to get this bread. I'm with it, Nate, dog. And that's, and that's confidence. Yeah, speaking. Yeah, that ain't yeah. cockiness. My, my pocket's full of, <laughs> my pocket full of confidence, but I need some cockiness, though. I need that old cockiness, though. Like, Bob Parsons when he get that old cockiness, hey, though. So what you say, so what you saying is, Nate, I got to bring, I got to bring some cockiness <laughs> out of myself this year, being that it's you a big do, year. Dog. That's what you saying. You saying, I got to, I got to, you say when the cameras is on, I gotta you turn. Gotta I gotta turn the switch on. Just grab his arm and don't let him talk. <laughs> <laughs> grab him and hold him. <laughs> yeah, thank you, right. Niagara. Hey man, you know we always say, yeah, you know we always say at the end of the show, Nate. Flushed we all, we did one. what? Yes. Bless another one, man. We appreciate y'all tuning in, man. We check it out. Check you guys out next time. Make sure you guys share this now. That's some good knowledge right there. The man himself, Big Nate Dog, dropping some gems. Don't forget those. Get your Infinity Stones. Yes. We'll see y'all next time. <laughs>